There are many secrets unknown to humanity, many riddles man will never be able to solve. The existence of God, the size of space, the infinity of inflation, the secret of death. But the biggest riddle of them all is, who was first in Transylvania? When browsing the internet, one is prone to interacting with people from all over the world, and also observing different cultures interact with each other. For many of us, the most well-known rivalries on the internet are of those between the English and the French, Dad, are you dumb? Are you getting rude to man? the Europeans and Americans, and the Serbians and Albanians. Eat Albanian boy, fuck your family complete. However, among these rival groups lies yet another two, who are usually not as well known to outsiders unfamiliar with the shitfests that are the Balkans and its neighborhood, that being the Hungarian and Romanian feud. Now, the Hungarian and Romanian conflict mostly centers around one place, that being Transylvania where both groups claim that the others stole their rightful land and follow up by calling each other's Mongols or Gypsies, depending on who's speaking of course. However, to dismiss the conflict simply over territory would be nothing but foolish, as it has much more substance to it. To start off dissecting the conflict, we first need to take a look at the history of Transylvania, the main area of dispute between the two ethnic groups. The prehistory of Transylvania is characterized by numerous migrations from all over Europe, most notably from the Pannonian Basin, modern-day Wallachia, Banat and Anatolia. During the Middle Paleolithic and Neolithic eras, the status quo was Cavemen came, cavemen went. Everything changed in the 14th century BC, when new invasions coming from Central and Eastern Europe destabilized the people living there. The newcomers formed the Gava culture, theorized to be the predecessors of the Dacians, by intermingling and interbreeding with the local population. After the Gava came Asian horsemen who raided and plundered the area, making many locals move from the area abandoning their settlements, which the new coming Asian invaders settled in. With the depopulation of Transylvania, many Celts who were migrating throughout Europe decided to settle in the area. With their arrival and the intermingling with the locals, the famous Dacians emerged and founded their kingdom in 168 BC. For the next 280 years, Transylvania was under Dacian control until in the 2nd century AD, the Romans conquered the kingdom. In the 3rd century again, Transylvania relived a shock as again the land became overrun with invading tribes such as the Carpi, Visigoths, Huns, Gepids, Avars and Slavs. After the invasion from numerous tribes across Europe, historians on both sides failed to reach a consensus regarding if the Draco-Roman population who survived in Transylvania would go on to become the ancestors of today's Romanians, or if the first Romanians slash Vlachs appeared in the region in the 13th century during the mass migration of Slavs and Vlachs that ensued after the Battle of Kosovo, which is one of the key components over the debate of who was in Transylvania first, but we'll elaborate more on that that later. The Hungarians first arrived in Europe in the 9th century, and the Kingdom of Hungary was soon founded in 1000 AD, and three years after the kingdom's formation, it established partial control over Transylvania. Now again, there is a lack of consensus of what actually happened here. Some historians claim that uh, the Hungarians started populating Transylvania between the 10th and 13th centuries, while others claim that the land was already settled with them before due to the previous tribal migrations that ensued earlier in the millennium. For the next 500 years, Transylvania was a voivodeship under Hungary. In the 16th century, Transylvania became a semi-independent state known as the Principality of Transylvania, which still retained the rule of Hungarian kings, to which many Hungarians point at when saying that Transylvania belongs to Hungary, as throughout most of history the territory was under Hungarian rule. However, a counter-argument that follows by Romanians is, even though historically Transylvania was under the Kingdom of Hungary, many Romanians argue that Romanians living there made up a good part of the population and were continuously mistreated by the ruling class of Hungarians. In the testimony of Croatian bishop Anton Vrancic, Vrancic 
to know that Transylvania is inhabited by three nations, CKs, Hungarians and Saxons. I should also add that the Romanians, who even though they easily equal to others in number, have no liberties, no nobility and no rights of their own, except for a small number. Now again, like most of the things previously mentioned in the video, Vrancic's testimony is interpreted differently by both sides, and many Hungarians would dispute the bishop's claims. After the defeat of the Ottomans, Transylvania came under Habsburg rule, and under the Austrian Empire, the territory had a significant amount of autonomy, and was separately administered from Hungary, although the Austrian rulers acknowledge it as the lands of the crown of Saint Stephen slash Istvan. After the Hungarian Revolution and the formation of Austria-Hungary, Transylvania was fully incorporated under the administration of Hungary, to which many Romanians were dismayed. After the First World War, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was dismantled with the Treaty of Trianon, which to this day stands very controversial with many Hungarians, as 70% of the country's territory was stripped away from them and the new borders did not follow ethnic lines, which left many Hungarians, around 31%, which numbered at around 3.3 million under the jurisdiction of newly formed Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia and Romania. Transylvania at the time boasted a Hungarian population of around 1.3 to 1.6 million, which was around 25 to 31 percent of the territory. In 1940, Northern Transylvania was given to Hungary during the Second Vienna Accord, however that still didn't fix the problem as a hefty amount of both Romanians and Hungarians still resided in both countries. Within the territory Hungary received, during the award, more than 50% of the population wasn't of Hungarian origin, and around 20% of southern Transylvania's population remained Hungarian. After the Second World War, Hungary's borders returned to its post trianon state, and things haven't changed since. Essentially, within the historical aspect, Hungarians and Romanians clash when it comes to the ethnic and ethnic ownership of Transylvania. As several different studies and reports claim different origin theories, both sides claim that there was they are first, and by default they have first laid claims to Transylvania. On top of that, Hungarians claim that historically Transylvania was under the rulership of Hungary and thus is rightful Hungarian land, meanwhile Romanians claim that while yes, Transylvania was under Hungary's banner, the Romanians living there were equal in number and they were mistreated by the Hungarians and discriminated based on their ethnic origin through programs of Magyarization. However, things don't end just there, as there are many aspects of modern life and policy that influence the relationship of the two. For starters, Transylvania today is a multicultural society, where 70% of the population are Romanians, 17% Hungarians, 4% Gypsies and the rest are others such as Ukrainians and Germans. With that being said, many of the issues in Transylvania stem from that, and, and ultimately influence the Hungaro-Romanian relations. As Hungarians are around 17% of the total area's population and make up a hefty majority in Zekerland, many of them ask for local minority rights and autonomy in their municipalities and provinces where they make up the ethnic majority. Most of the rights the Hungarians ask are related to their language and culture, such as being able to attend all levels of education in the Hungarian language. <laughs> as well as having ethnic representation in government institutions related to their communities. In theory, the Hungarian minority has extensive support for its culture and language in all subjects in all levels of education, except for the subjects of grammar and Romanian literature. As well, in the villages inhabited by at least 20% minority representatives, the government is obliged to offer them access to administrative services in their language, and bilingual signs and notice boards are also erected in those municipalities. Yet, many Hungarians complain that these rights are not always fully respected. Meanwhile, many Romanians claim that their Hungarians are gaining too much special treatment and are not integrating enough into society, as many, mostly located in Sekerland, struggle to speak Romanian. Because because of these government programs and Hungarian calls for autonomy, the loyalty of Romanian citizens of, of Hungarian ethnicity to the Romanian state is often questioned. One of the key things that has influenced this is also that many, if not most Hungarians in Transylvania have dual citizenship. Alongside this, the Hungarian government has financially supported the diaspora in Hungary in several ways, mostly through financial and political aid, which brought the Hungarian population even more distrust from the Romanians. The ultimate fear of Romania 
Romania is the idea of Hungarian secession from Romania, while for Hungarians it's the loss of their cultural identity. Of course, all that I said can be debated and argued by both sides, and I highly recommend that you do your own research and read more on the topic if you're interested. All the sources I used for the video will be in the description. Thanks again to the channel members, especially Julian Apostasies and Mickey D, you guys rock, and special thanks to the people who helped me writing this video. Laxio, Valentin, Free Spy, Agent Cobalt, and Wild East Guy. You've watched Living Ironically in Europe, and I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.